everybody. Welcome to Brom Booth 1331 here at MRI. We're here with Osceola, um, Osceola Chief Carroll and Chief Kennett. Uh, so basically we're going to go ask them a little bit about what they do, what they cover, um, and kind of why they chose these units. So let's just talk about your area you cover, uh, first of all. So. Osceola County uh, is located in Central Florida, just south of the Disney World area. We cover approximately 1,506 square miles of land mass. We do that out of 15 fire stations. Uh, we run three aerial devices every day, two squads, 13 engines, 11 rescues, four battalion chiefs, and division chief of operations on duty. We do all this, we are an all-hazards department. We are all ALS. Every one of our apparatuses and life bands advanced life support, and all of our rescues are transport ALS capable. So we run about 30,000 calls a year, roughly 88% of that is EMS calls. Um, like I said, we are all hazards, we do special uh, special operations also, as well as as well as hazmat. Excellent, we appreciate how you guys are doing yes. Thank you. So let's take a look at this International Super Chief. Really nice unit. We're going to tell you a little bit about every part of this unit. Um, and we'll go through with the Chiefs and uh, they'll tell us a little bit of why they picked what they did. So we'll start with the, uh, it's like you see the air horns up on the fender. Uh, you can see the light bar that they've chosen uh, with, their, with their light here. And the light up on the front uh, for scene. Come inside and you can look at their console layout in here. Kind of how this international looks on the inside of this truck. Why'd you guys pick your console layout that way? Uh, it just it's just a little bit more user friendly for the drivers or, or the riders and that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much how we did it. Just make it simple and uh, efficient. Okay. Excellent. As you guys can see, this is a four door crew cab. So they have this extra seat in the rear. And we see you have a locker. We will show you guys that locker soon. Uh, we got the David Clark headsets as well uh, for the crew so they can talk back and forth. Uh, why did you decide to do the locker on one side and the seat on the other? Well, the locker on the uh, the other side is for uh, the third air pack. The third seat on this side is for if we're precepting some of our guys and our paramedics. They want them in the front versus right in the back. Next to this for the third seat. Um, we actually made some modifications that actually help us <coughs> more with this console here. We used that shelving there, but we actually made it a little bit more uh, a dynamic cab than anything else. Excellent. You guys can also see we have the 30 amp shoreline. We have the 20 amp shoreline with the indicator light as well. So we know that that's charging um, every time that that's it. Um, as you can see on this one, we got the, the Wayland 900 series lights um, on the sides. Uh, but now we're going to open up OSS 1 and kind of look at this. This is a very unique layout, um, unique to Osceola. And we're going to ask them what they're doing. We can see the lift uh, that they have, the Zyco lift. Um, and you can see that we have the transverse in here. It goes all the way to the other side. So tell us a little bit about this layout in here. Well, we, we wanted to be able to access, we have backboard, scoop stretcher, pike pole. We wanted to be able to access both sides, from both sides of the truck to get the backboards out. We do run uh, interstate. We do have a turnpike in our first two. We didn't want the guys standing in traffic on either side of it. So we are able to kind of get something from either side of the truck without putting them in traffic. That's very good. Excellent. Excellent. Nice, nice layout. Nice yep. Layout. yep. Now we're going to go off to uh, OSS number two. Uh, obviously, these guys are fire, um, so we can see their SCBA brackets in here. Uh, tell us why you chose OSS number two um, to house these, uh, and, and what you went with this layout for. We went with this layout, uh, as you know, we have the third locker over on the other side, so when the paramedic on the or passenger side gets out, their air pack is right there. When we're precepting that third person, both of them get off of this side of the truck, they come right here, their gear is here, their air pack is here, so it's immediate they have access to their gear. That's awesome. When we get it back to the department, we're going to install a tick charger. All of our uh, uh, rescues carry thermal imaging cameras along with all of our apparatus. Um, we do expect them, they do go interior on fires. Like I said, we are all hazards. So they have a water can that takes with them. It's right next to where the pipe poles go. So they <coughs> grab all that stuff when they get there. They get off the truck, get their equipment, be ready to go fight fire. Excellent. I also want to point out all the LED strip lighting these guys have in every compartment. Um, and then I also want to show you that every every rear facing door that they have, they have the big truck light on them uh, for extra safety for anybody coming behind them that they can see that if those doors are open, they can see that in an emergency coming this way. This is also unique. 
So if you look up here, this is where the power distribution quarters is. We call this the PDQ. Uh, this is where all the electrical's at. This is our uh, multiplex electrical system here. Uh, could you tell us why you moved this here? Was it to make more room on the inside? Our mechanic staff, we used to, in our first generation problems, we had the uh, access hatch and patient work. This makes it much easier for our maintenance staff to gain access to all the electrical components that they may need to get to for routine maintenance, repair, whatever it is. It's just way more convenient for them out here. Yeah, excellent. Now, fellas, that's number three. I know that's number three. You see a lot of storage here, uh, a lot of shelves, a lot of adjustable shelves in this compartment. Can you tell us a little bit about what you use this compartment for? Uh, mostly um, just general storage for equipment that guys have, air bottles, that kind of stuff. We we'll actually mount some brackets in here for uh, diesel cylinders and that kind of stuff. One of the things we're excited about is the AeroClave um, connection right here. So we have contaminants inside the patient compartment. We have a unit that actually has an AeroClave that can come in, connect to this, and decon the inside of the, the truck itself without having to go into the inside. Yeah. So that's something we're very excited about. That's, we can show you the nozzle for that here in the rear head pad. So we'll know exactly where that's at. So we'll talk a little more about that when we get inside. Okay. Uh, coming to the rear of the truck, you see you guys go with the light bar. Uh, you got your reverse camera, you got your uh, window level lights here. Uh, anything with the light bars? Why you chose the light bar for the rear? Just to give us some visibility out on the roadways. Like the uh, Chief Kevin said, we cover a lot of major interstate. So we I-4, the Florida Turnpike, Highway 192, and at nighttime we need to be had several accidents where our vehicles have been hit on the roadside. So the more visible we can become, the better off we are. Excellent. Makes, makes plenty of sense. Step on over here to OSS number four. And OSS number four, I'm not going to guess, but I believe this is going to be stair chair storage. Stair chair uh, storage, yeah. But let's talk about a little bit about more of what we, we hold in this compartment here. Uh, stair chair. Uh, uh, there's a cooler in here. Small toolbox up top. Yeah, some tarps, that kind of stuff is what the guys need for to assist not a fire if they need to. But generally, uh, we do, we wanted the stair chair to the outside. Some people have the inside. We want on here for the guys to be able to pull it and take it out and not have to go inside the apartment inside. Excellent. Thank you. As we come on down, we're going to get to the Easy Glide sliding door. Uh, it's just that, right? It's the Easy Glide sliding door. Uh, the thing's great, great for safety, uh, great for everything like that. I'm going to let them talk a little bit about why they chose the Easy Glide sliding door. We do do that as a standard, but I want to talk to them about the safety and the reasons why they may have chosen this door. Safety is the biggest issue. Uh, like I said before, we have a lot of roadways that we cover. So we didn't want our guys coming in and out of this door previously. When your door opened up, you had a blind spot. So with this configuration, they have visibility on either side, no matter where they're parked in the roadway. So that's a Perfect. big, big safety consideration for us, which is why we love the user glide door. Excellent, excellent. Let's go on up to OSS number five. Um, in OSS number five, you guys can see the full transverse coming through on this side as well. Um, and then we got some additional storage here. If you look underneath, in the, the we got some additional storage here with some of our electrical stuff. You can see the inverter um, and some of the other electrical items down on the bottom there. Um, and it is separate from everything up here um, when you shut the door, so everything is separate. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys keep on these shelves in here that has the inside-outside access. Uh, we've already talked about transverse, but what do we use right here? What do we kind of carry here? we got uh, our pediatric box, or hands-heavy pediatric box. We carry a trauma bag um, and some other item stuff. Uh, kind of splints, airways, air splints, that kind of stuff. We have our charging unit up there for our Lucas device. We, we plug in there and also our suction unit. Uh, up top there, that's where our outlets are for where we charge a lot of our things for the guys on the inside. So it's pretty much just any other things that we need, trauma bag, splint bag, airway bag, uh, that kind of stuff goes in there, pediatric and box. Excellent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go on the inside of this unit here. Oh, I forgot. We want to talk about the roll-up door on this <laughs> side uh, before I go inside. So in here there's a roll-up door on this uh, crew cab chassis. So we, we basically took the door, uh, made some modifications here to fit their needs. And let's talk a little bit about this. I know we talked about it a little bit over there, but let's talk a little bit more about uh, why we chose to do this instead of the door and, and kind of what we use in here. On, on this side of the truck, of course, it has an SBA bracket. But again, every day the truck has two, two people on it. So the paramedic on a fire call jumps out this side 
his gear is now right here. Previously, it was over on the other side, so they had to go all the way around the truck to get to their gear. Now this compartment is big enough, we keep their gear in there. There will be a flashlight mounted in there for the paramedic and also the water can that is stored here. So that he can get his water can here, all of his gear, his pack, a pike hole if he has to, and be done. And on the other side, which I failed to mention, we mount on the doors a set of irons. So the driver will grab the irons, the uh, firefighter, the paramedic over here will grab the water can and a pike hole. So all the equipment's laid out for what they need to grab. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to take you inside this nice uh, rig and we'll talk about the inside a little bit here with Chiefs and uh, we'll see you here in a second. <coughs> so here we are on the inside of the rig. The first thing we see in here is the, the striker power load. Um, do you guys run your striker power loads in every unit you guys have? Yeah, it, it's actually it's one of the best things we actually have in these trucks is the striker power load. It's, it's so helpful. Uh, we've not had any issues with them. The guys absolutely love them. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about the street side layout here. So on the street side, you guys can see their layout over here. What do you guys normally keep in this cabinet right here? And I also want to show you guys that this is a restocking, ca restocking cabinet as well. Uh, bed pans, uh, sterile water, some trauma, uh, bandaging, that kind of stuff. Good morning. They come in, we've actually put bins in there. They're actually, it's not free floating like that. And then this one is all our airway stuff. Uh, anything controlling the airway sensors right by the head um, is right there. Um, one of the things that we like to do is we have two ports of oxygen, but we also have one right here above you. So if you have somebody on CPAP or anything like that, you connect them into this one and they're completely out of the way. So you don't have any O2 uh, tubing coming across. You actually have it from the top down. So we're very excited about that. Uh, so let's talk about the CPR layout. This is a, a nice layout. You got your secondary action area here. And then I see you guys got a recess sharps and trash here as well. Um, how often did you use this seat? And why'd you set this up the way that you did here in the CPR section? Uh, well, it was actually a good question. One of the chiefs asked, it was a good question. Since we have a Lucas device, why have a CPR seat? Well, it still gives us 360 degrees around the patient. Instead of everybody working off one side, we can completely surround it. Uh, in a code, they're working on one side, whether it be in doing uh, IV stuff, monitor stuff, because we actually have a bracket that goes right there on that um, tabletop there. But also during trauma, too, they're on that side. So if we don't have that seat there and it's just a wall there, it makes it safe, at least to give them a safe area to kind of sit and do some type of action. It was, the way our protocols are also written, any alert, whether it's sepsis, cardiac, stroke, trauma, cardiac arrest, anything like that, requires an additional attendant. So previously, when we had that, they either had to be stuck there or here. Now with this, on those live patients that were working at our alerts, we can have medics on both sides, attendants on both sides. Excellent. It makes it easier for them. We also see under here, we got some storage there. Do you guys see anything, <laughs> blankets or anything underneath this, this seat? Yeah, we got wool blankets. We'll keep under there for the trauma patients, wrap them up after we strip them and spin them. Excellent. So let's look a little bit back here by the attendant seat um, and kind of check out their, their main action area here. You can see it's been shortened up. Um, that's due to the PDQ being on the outside. Um, but up here you can see our Vista screen. Um, that's where all the controls are at. You can see the fire research intercom system here. Uh, that's up there on the console as well so they can talk back and forth um, but between the cabin and the rear. Um, Tell us a little bit about how you set this up. We see your hose line, uh, FT4, FT454 uh, air conditioning um, unit controlled there. Um, and you can actually look up on the front wall and see the FT454. How does that air conditioner perform for you guys? Um, and have you used it every unit? It, it works very well. You actually get a throttle at the back. It actually blows pretty good cold air. Um, we don't, I don't think we've had any issues or any complaints no. about them at all other than icicles coming off the top of the yeah. railings and stuff, but that's about it. Excellent. I also see on the front wall, back behind the attendant seat here, you guys have this cubby. Um, what are you putting in this cubby back there? Uh, that's definitely a unique feature on your guys' rig. That was kind of some dead space that we had in the previous uh, versions of this truck. And what we did is we said, hey, we can cut that out. So if we want to mount something back there or put additional equipment, 
that was just a little space where we could, in the future, if we had to put more stuff in, we, we found some space to do it. Excellent. What are you guys using the, the cabinet above you there, Chief Kennett? This cabinet right here, it's just extra supplies where the guys can actually store some stuff. Um, uh, anything that they want. We actually, it, we've got so much cabinet space in here that it gives them extra storage, kind of store some extra stuff because some of our units, they don't make it back to the, to the station to restock. So we can actually have extra stuff up here. Uh, they're just so busy. So they, they actually just extra IV supplies, extra um, IV catheters, that kind of stuff actually gets stored up in there. Um, glove thing behind our head here where they, they put their gloves in the boxes so they can access it from there, access it from inside the truck. So we're, we're very happy about that versus the gloves bouncing around the back of the truck. Um, cabinets, two cabinets behind you there. Um, really, it's just another action area where they store extra stuff. Uh, most of this, the cabinets on this side is all of our action where we get stuff. This side is more like for extra storage and that kind of thing right there. We also see that you guys went with the squad bench um, with the double click V4 harnesses. Uh, nice for safety. We also see that you have second pace of transport as well on here. Uh, can you tell why we, we stuck with the bench and why we went with this layout on this side? Well, I mean, we, we often wheel transport two patients. Uh, we didn't want to limit this truck for a single patient source. So we, we kept the, the uh, squad bench in play just for that secondary VLS transport that we may have. Uh, the harness itself is just a, another safety feature that we believe in for on. What about this drawer here? You got a pull out drawer. Um, if the medics work in here, they have a drawer here. Uh, what do you guys keep in there for them? That's actually all the, the IV startup stuff. Anything to start IV goes there, but rather than that little tool kit that a lot of people want to put on the, the bench seat itself, we put it in there just for safety features. If they get hit from the side, it doesn't go flying through the air. So that that's there. So underneath the bench, we also have some additional storage. You can see where their sharps and trash will go in the containers there. Um, we also have additional storage. You guys storing anything down here? Blankets again, rookies. stuff like that? Or? Yeah, we put the rookies in there. Rookies? <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard that. Yeah, actually, actually, that was Kenneth, by the way. <laughs> uh, back here, you guys can see we, we have some additional storage in the back here in the rear. Um, and this one here, it, it's all closed off here. What do you guys keep in this one? Um, you went with the aluminum face uh, with the squeeze latches. Um, that is just another extra storage. Um, Trauma dressings, extra trauma dressing and the stuff in a, in a kit is right there. Um, fluids, that kind of stuff. Um, some of the guys use it for books and protocol books and that kind of stuff in there. Um, each unit is a little specific, different specific for their needs. They put stuff in there. And one big thing with all this compartment space here is we used to cram a lot of stuff into every little compartment here. Now we don't have to do that. We can spread things out, you know, you have eight non rebreathers up in this one little hole and you grab one, then they all fall out of them. So with us being able to spread it out a little bit more with all this space, it makes it a little bit easier, a little more user friendly for our guys and we're not dropping stuff all over the place. What do you keep in the, the one right here by you, Chief Carroll? I'll let you go ahead and open it. Kind of <coughs> what, what's in this one here? This is an inside access only cabinet. Um, as you can see, when we was in OSS number four, you can see that blocked off off top. Um, it's got a couple adjustable shelves in here, so they can adjust those any height. What are you guys keeping in that one? Basically, again, this is, you know, trauma stuff, bandaging, things like that. For easy access, when we're back here with a trauma patient, and like I said, we do run a lot of roadways. We have a lot of trauma. So we have things that right here that are easy to get to. So if we have to get a, grab a tourniquet, it's right here, boom. If we need a trauma dressing, it's right here, boom. It's all done. Excellent. So we'll go to the rear head pad, uh, back behind Chief Carroll here, um, and we'll talk about this. First thing I'm gonna point out is gonna be the, the patient camera on the inside. This is a, a non-recordable device for you guys, correct. Um, and it just basically gives the driver if something is happening in the back, they can kind of see that, pull over if need be, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you can also see the clock that we have here. It's the Intellitech um, digital clock. Uh, very nice clock. You can uh, actually keep the minutes and times and everything like that. Um, is that why you guys went with that clock um, to kind of show everything and kind of count the minutes? And yes, sir. Once we get some training on it, it'll be when they come in here, they can hit that. They can start doing patient timing and things like that. So, you know, in your critical patients, you look up, hey, it's five minutes, it's time for another set of vital signs. Or you're working to code, hey, it's been five minutes, it's time for another epi. So we can look at the clock right here, digital, boom, quick and easy. 
And the last thing you guys are going to see, this is the Aeroclave nozzle. So the hose that you guys see now in OSS number three, um, the Chief Kennett was talking about uh, for decontamination. Uh, there's basically a, a little machine that comes up, hooks up to that hose. When you hook that up, this actually opens us up, kills 99.9% .9 of all the, the um, bacteria in the back, um, everything like that. Yeah. It's a very great system for the city of Osceola uh, and definitely for your guys' crew. Um, how long have you guys been running this um, and how well do you like using this system? Aeroclave for a couple of years. Yeah, right? we've been using Aeroclave, the Aeroclave product for probably around four years. Um, not only do we do our rescues and our new versions of the rescues now, if we have a contamination of, you know, whatever it might be, meningitis, whatever it might be, we can come in here, we have a unit that comes out, plugs in, boom, decons the thing. But we also have a program where we decon the stations with Aeroclave um, quarterly. Takes. How long does it take? Yeah. Um, it, we have a Keep unit that actually comes out. Um, if the guys are actually in working in the hospital, dropping off a patient, he hooks up, plugs in, and it sprays out. Probably less than 15 minutes it does. Okay. And, and, and you don't have to have any concern about any type of airborne disease. I mean, there was a run on uh, Ebola that, that, that came out. We had no concerns because we have we could plug in and go. That's awesome. And really, we. We were confident that uh, the surfaces and everything like that had killed that virus. So we'd still come through and wipe through and wipe it down, but the guys can get in there without any concerns as far as anything else. That's good. Excellent. Definitely want to look at this layout up here. It's a little different. You guys got the dome lights, and then you got what usually is our angled lights here in the center. Why did you guys choose this um, type of layout? And it's definitely unique. Uh, so talk a little bit about the lighting that you guys chose for your rig. We put all the lighting up here directly over our patient. You know, we have lighting comes down here that throws shadows this way, or if it's over here, it throws shadows that way. This way, our lighting all comes straight down. So we don't have a big problem with shadows moving across patients and things like that. Um, that's the biggest reason why we put the lights all right up here. One of our trucks, and the, the interior light here, one of our trucks at our very southern part is any given point, 45 minutes and an hour of transport on a basic thing. So you'd be able to set the lighting however you want to for patient comfort. It's customer service. Excellent. Um, that about does it for the rig um, on the interior and the exterior. Um, so we want to thank you guys for tuning in to Braun, uh, booth 1331. I do want to talk to these guys a little bit about our dealer 10-8 um, that sold this truck um, and ask them a little bit about, um, oh, we'll go with Chief Carroll. Chief Carroll, how, <laughs> a little bit about how um, your relationship with 10-8 is um, and, and how they, they treat you as a customer. Very good. Um, 10 8 treats us well. We buy all of our vehicles, our fire apparatus, and our uh, ambulance type vehicles through 10 8. Um, they're very responsive. If I have a problem, I can either call my representative, either from Pierce or from Braun, I get immediate response. If I need to, when I have vehicles up at 10 8, if I need an answer on when they're going to be done or what the status of them is, I can always give Floyd a direct call. He answers it, he's always very responsive to us works very well with us. Excellent. Um, and lastly, in closing, we would definitely like to thank you, Chief Carroll. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief Kennett, yes, uh, for allowing us to use this unit. We also want to thank 10-8 Fire Department uh, for the wonderful job you guys did with these guys um, on making this unit as well. Um, everybody, we're here till 1 o'clock today. It's open from 10 to 1, booth 1331, Braun Ambulances. Uh, stop by and see us. Come check this thing out. Uh, we can answer some more questions for you. Thank you for tuning in.